grab the appropriate tool. This should do it. Too big? Still too big? Just the right size? Alright, party people! Welcome back! I knew one of these days were gonna come soon. Today is the day. So I thought today would be the perfect day for me to actually try to remove the bearing mount from that RockShox Super Deluxe R shock. So today I'm gonna try to remove that. And if I'm successful in doing that, I'm gonna dissect the complete shock. So we'll take it all apart. We'll look at the internals and we'll try to make some educated deductions about how the shock works. If you've seen the previous video where I was actually trying to do the 50 hour service on that shock, I snapped off my Allen wrench inside one of the bolt heads for the bearing mount. So as you can see, we removed the bolt on that side. And when we tried to remove the bolt from that side, we actually snapped off our Allen key inside there. So I may be able to Dremel a uh, slot in it and try to remove it like that and if not successful ultimately i might try to jb weld some uh, some extension onto it and uh, try to move it that this should do it too big still too big just the right size i don't know i'm gonna see if i can try to slice it this way and then take a punch and actually try to loosen the uh the bolt like that instead of cutting across the top I just uh, cut a vertical edge in it with a Dremel and then chisel, took the chisel and uh, hammer and gave it a good whack and I moved it. And so hopefully now I can just twist it out. So she's coming out slowly but surely. You can see the head's pretty loose now. And there we go. So I think the first thing we're gonna do since we, we already had the air canister apart on this uh, shock previously. So let's see if we can pull this off. Super Deluxe R. I believe that uh, RockShox calls this thing the countermeasure, which apparently is a spring, a wave spring. You can see how it's formed there. It's a wave spring on the negative side of the air chamber. So just think about this, when this air canister is on, all of the air being compressed is inside this, uh, this chamber here. And uh, this spring is inside this part of the canister, which is sealed up by these, uh, this piston is sealed up by an O-ring and rubber seals there. So all the air is here, that's the positive chamber. And then the negative part of the chamber is this piece up here you can see how this kind of goes together so if we just kind of put it up there um, this spring is actually on the negative air chamber and apparently what this spring does this wave spring is kind of a uh, different type of spring obviously uh, these wave springs i don't know too much about them i'm not a mechanical engineer type but uh, i believe they provide there seems to be a lot of surface area going on here to this type of spring, so I'm sure. I'm guessing it probably help, helps the shock in the top of the stroke here. So as soon as you start to compress, uh, this this spring here probably helps move the uh, the shock through the resistance on its top part of the of the stroke. I'm just going to slide this countermeasure off. In these types of shocks, that's what um, I believe Rock Shocks calls. Um, I believe it's called the Debonair, and then Fox calls the Eval, which is additional kind of negative air chamber. This piston here, which is a uh, is kind of a separator between the air canister uh, positive and negative side, and then once we remove that, we can kind of take a look at how the damper controls work, and we'll remove the piggyback here. Um, one word about shocks with a piggyback. So you see this on a lot of shocks today. Uh, if they don't have the piggyback, all of this is kind of in line. And I, I think the thinking behind the piggyback is, is that you have an amount of damper oil in the damper body here 
you have an amount of damper oil here oil here in the piggyback as well and you've got some damper controls um, up here on the piggyback if you have that this particular shock does not have the uh, the compression controls it's the, the compression dampening is built in so I'm interested to see what it looks like here if you have the RC or the RCT I think it has the, the compression damper controls up here either way You've got two bodies now that have damper oil in it and so you've got this pathway for oil to circulate uh, through the damper and back through to uh, the damper body here you've got a barrier here now with damper oil in it that's not part of the main damper body you've got more volume of fluid and so that volume of fluid remember we talked about um, damping the whole what, what you're really doing is actually turning the energy of the shock movement, uh, the compression and the rebound, and you're, turn, you're dissipating that through the heat of the damper oil. Uh, and so uh, the, the compression and rebound controls and the damper controls, usually there's a high speed or low speed compression control on this piggyback here if you look at some of the upper models. This particular one doesn't have it. But that damper oil can travel in between through the damping circuit and back. And uh, what that does supposedly is on uh, repeated shock use uh, so for think about extended downhills or um, just repeated uh, use probably this volume of oil will get hotter and at some point in time the shock would probably not behave as expected if you uh, if you put it through the ringer so having an extra body of damper oil here separated from the main damper body gives you more volume of oil for one but uh, also keeps you isolated away a bit from the heat that's kind of stored up inside the damper shaft here as well. And uh, I'm no expert by any means, but just making an observation here, this is kind of what it looks like it's doing. Alrighty, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and move down and remove these spacers here. So we definitely have three spacers there now I'm going to I'm going to unscrew and release the air out of the piggyback as well all right so the end of your uh, you have a valve core remover let's see if I can get it to focus this thing works perfectly on this screw here so these can either be charged with nitrogen or air. I'm just going to remove that. So there's our other core, valve core. I'm going to proceed to remove the piggyback and then see if we can get this, uh, this piston out. So the official name that uh, most shock manufacturers give for this is IFP reservoir so IFP internal floating piston so what happens is when the damper oil runs through the IFP reservoir the piston actually will compress this air or nitrogen charge inside the IFP reservoir they call it cavitation but it's helping push the damper oil moving in the opposite direction all right we're just using our strap rinse here it's not too tight so that's good unscrew this right side up because I know there's damper oil in here there we go it's flowing out already pour this in and if you notice inside there's our IFP or internal floating piston pretty dirty pretty dirty all right in order to get this piston out I need to push it back from the other side so I'm gonna have to remove this cap it looks like there's a little retaining ring in here holding this on once you have this off instead of pulling this out this way you just push it in like that and uh, and it's much easier to get to this retaining ring that you see right there on the edge and we'll just pop that out and hopefully we don't lose it there's a retaining ring that we popped out of the inside here now we should be able to push our piston out I'll just grab it with my tool here and just kind of work it out and so this is the cap and that is our internal floating piston or IFP this white piece here and so you can just stick your finger through the IFP reservoir ca canister and push your internal floating piston piston out and 
you can see the o-ring there around the ifp so this is this is an actual bleed screw and so i'm guessing they use this to get all of the air out of the uh the oil the damper oil side all right i got the shot in the vise here and i had this 21 millimeter wrench here and i'm just gonna it's one of these thin wrenches and that's the only thing i have in 21 millimeters so looks like it's coming i don't think i've got it all the way out yet i can see it unthreaded from the dampers there we go and then we should be able to uh wiggle our piston out and so there's our damper body with the oil bath in there, our damper oil in there. And we can see our damper mechanism here. And I'm just gonna pour the oil out into our container there. Just a little bit of dirt in there. All right, let's continue the dissection of our rear shock here. Had to take a break away from doing this yesterday for some prior commitments and we're back at it today. So this is the actual damper body. This is the damper shaft, obviously and uh, here we have our main air shaft piston and if we look down at the bottom here we have our damper piston along with a shim stack i don't know if you can see in there but between uh, on both sides of this piston we have a set of shims and so what we're going to do now is actually remove this nut and take a look at the compression and rebound damping circuitry and if you recall uh, in the shocks with the piggyback that also have uh, additional high speed uh, compression controls and high speed rebound controls there's usually some valving and some uh, uh, damping circuitry around the piggyback as well as fluid moves up through as this compresses and circulates around it goes through another dampened circuitry so Shocks that don't have those additional controls will only have dampened circuitry down here. The one word of caution, when you take this nut off, make sure when you slide these things off the shaft here that you have a, uh, a Allen wrench or screwdriver that you can just slide these off onto. And when you spread these out, spread them out in order um, because it is very difficult to get these back in the right positions. I have some uh, some of these silicone soft jaws here. I'm gonna try to clamp the shaft in one of these uh, cutouts here. Just go quite big enough. There we go. Find you something that will fit down in the shaft here that's clean, and just put it down in the shaft like that. Unscrew your piston nut, and once you've got that unscrewed, then you can just push all the things off of the, the damper shaft here and keep them in order on your uh, on your tool there so that's our shim stack basically um, well our piston in the middle and our shim stacks are actually on top of those so you can if I move this spacer here you can see the shims there on top and if you look under the bottom there you can see all the shims that are there on the bottom as well i removed the uh the actual air piston and uh it's here and then also the bump stop and the o-ring or the bottom out stop and i was just looking at this shaft here and so this is one of the things i'll try to get in the, the camera here see if i can get it see the small hole here the small hole is the actual orifice that the damping oil flows through from the main shock to the piggyback and vice versa. So if you look at the side profile of this, this actual piston, you notice that on both the compression and rebound side, there's uh, these slots in some of the holes which uh, allow oil passage through. If we think about our damper piston and oil in our damper, body here and as we compress or the shock goes through compression and the damper moves through the oil bath we have a few things that are going on here so on this side we have a compression stack and it's uh if you see it so 
facing the uh, top of the shock is the compression stack. And basically what happens is we have oil that moves through these orifices here. These, there's a little side slot there and we move the shim down. So there's a little slot there and the oil will flow through there. And based on the properties of these shims, it will deform these shims and let some oil bypass through. So that's going to control some of your compression. The shaft's going to displace some oil as well. Let me see if I can get this to focus. We already talked about this, but this hollow shaft here, there's oil that's going up through the shaft as well. So that's the compression stroke. So your compression stack is on this side or facing the top of the shock. And then on the bottom side here, we have a rebound stack and we have a similar, uh, similar function going on on the rebound side. So we have these slots and uh, as the as we rebound back from compression as as we move this way oil will flow through these little slots here and deform these rebound shims and I can, they're kind of stuck together there we go i don't want to take the nut off because but uh, there's a whole stack of shims here you can see they go from big to smaller and you can see some orifices there in the shaft as well that are covered by that and so as oil flows through here these shims will deform and that will control rebound or the speed of rebound all right so i just removed these two set screws that are on the outside of this so you can see one here. This is the rebound adjuster. Pretty small. So there's two of those. Around the edge of this, there's one there and then one on the opposite side. And an O-ring underneath that. And that kind of gives us some insight into how the rebound adjuster actually works. There's a pin here. So there's this ball here, which I think probably adds some noise, some click noise to it. But there's this pin here and if you remove this pin you can see it's graduated it's kind of cut at an angle and it only kind of fits in one way so notice the thickness of this piece here it's thinner here and it gets thicker here so it's pushing the pin in as you turn the knob all right so the actual damper shaft here is threaded but it's not reverse threaded so you'll have to get creative if you want to actually remove that from the top of the shock and uh, once you remove the damper shaft then you have this uh, there's a little needle now this pops out and it has you see those holes all around there and so this pin inserts into the top of the housing notice where the holes are in this pin and if we push that all the way in and those line up with the orifice or the hole for the actual piggyback. So what we're controlling here with the rebound knob is how much those holes are open or closed through the damp. So this is the damping circuitry to the piggyback here. So we have really two things controlling the rebound. There's a set amount of rebound controlled by the shims and there's some user controllable rebound provided by the damping circuitry up near the piggyback. And uh, if you had the RC or RCT, uh, which are the more expensive shocks, then there's more damping circuitry uh, between the, uh, the damper body and the piggyback as well. So that's the difference between the different levels or different price points on the shocks. There really is a lot more intricacy to uh, the damping circuitry and the higher end shocks. So. All right, party people, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed dissecting that shock as much as I did. Uh, it was really, really interesting to see how those things work and kind of make some educated guesses. Like I said, I'm by far no means a shock expert or even a uh, fluid dynamics expert or anything like that, but you can kind of make some assumptions based on what you see, based on what you've read. Uh, I was just opening that shock up just out of curiosity and just to show you uh, what all is inside of it. So I hope you enjoyed the content. Until next time. Get up and ride, bend up and go.